If you're one of the many people who are waking up to recognize the fact that they continuously attract narcissists no matter what kind of setting they're in, no matter how much work they put in to not attract that type of person, they continuously end up in some type of relationship with a narcissist over and over, then this video is for you. This video is not for the person who has only ever dealt with one narcissist in their life. This video is not for the people who can't definitively say that there has been a pattern of behavior in terms of attracting narcissists into their life. However, if you are one of the people who've only dealt with a narcissist once or twice in your life, I do want you to watch this video because I think there's a lot of things in it that are still going to help you understand why or what events put the circumstances in motion to keep you in that relationship for longer than what you needed to. So first of all, I, I want everybody to understand that there's no such thing as coincidence. So, you know, patterns are showing you that there is a root cause to continue a certain cycle as long as that cycle is not interrupted or broken. And if you try to ignore a pattern, try to ignore the evidence, the data that show, oh yeah, I continuously do this over and over, or this is a certain cycle in my life, then there's not gonna be any way for you to have a different outcome. What you're gonna have is you're gonna seemingly get out of one cycle, but what you've actually done is strengthen the momentum for the next time that that thing comes around. Unfortunately, this is what happens with people who do yo-yo dieting, right? They decide, I really wanna lose weight. They try the newest trend, the newest fad. They hire a trainer, whatever it is that they do, they do lose weight. But because it doesn't become a lifestyle, that cycle actually wasn't interrupted. It just was on a slower circulation. And so it comes back and they do it again and then they try something else and they do it again. And it's actually reinforcing this downward spiral uh, pattern that they have developed in their life. So let's find out why you're actually attracting narcissists into your life and what you can do about it. Before I start telling you some of these reasons, I also want to make it very clear that you can't control how many narcissists are in society. You can't control if you are a target of narcissistic abuse, but you can absolutely control if you are a victim of narcissistic abuse. And so this video is talking about the victim aspect of narcissistic abuse. How do you become ensnared? How do you become entrapped in the narcissist web that leaves you in these repetitive cycles? So first of all, again, there's no coincidences, right? There's a reason why you found the narcissist attractive or charming or trustworthy. And especially if they're a grandiose narcissist, right? We can all be charmed by somebody who is overly charismatic, manipulative, and you don't know that they're showing you just a facade of what they are. However, what you can control is that your, your inability to look past that facade, right? You are wanting that version of them to be true. And so you're not willing to do your own due diligence to make sure that they are actually telling you the truth. This pattern leads to a very self-destructive cycle and you will continuously have that if you're not willing to push past the facade point and actually get down to the root of what's behind that mask, that facade that's being shown to you. Another obvious reason for the continuous pattern is that you experienced narcissistic abuse as a child. Particularly, you were raised by a narcissist or one of your caretakers, one of the, the common adults, the common caretakers you were around as a child was a narcissist. When our parents model for us, when our teachers model for us that this is the type of way that you behave, right? That you gaslight people, that you lie to people, that you manipulate people to get what you want, then you pick up on that. It's a learned behavior. So their words, their actions, their value system, you absorbed all of this as a child and without recognizing that that is a pattern. Again, it's impossible to interrupt the cycle and therefore it's impossible to get a different outcome than what you've been experiencing thus far. And so again, it makes complete sense that you would then be looking for a partner, you would be looking for a boss, you would be looking for a best friend who reinforces that value system, those behaviors, those words towards you because that is your norm. You are looking for what is normal to you, what is comfortable to you, even if it's very unhealthy and it's completely chaotic. Another reason is that you have very low self-esteem and there's 
many, 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 many reasons what could cause this to happen, especially if you know you were raised in a good home and there really wasn't anything that happened to you traumatic as a child, but something could have happened to you as an adult or a young adult that has caused you to now rethink your whole life. And at that low point, you were reaching out for whatever was near to make you feel uh, safe, secure, stable, whatever it may be. And the narcissist is trained to pick up on those type of insecurities and they swooped in at those moments. One of the things that I tell my clients is to pay attention to the times when you've met the narcissist, even if there's only been one narcissist, because typically you'll become enthralled or in, ensnared by a narcissist when you're in a transition point in your life. So if you're moving from high school to college or you're moving from college to your dream job or there's a transition point going on, or maybe you've uh, just went through a devastating loss, you know, you've lost some, somebody very close to you. When there's a transition period in your life, it's a prime opportunity for a narcissist to come in because they can sense when you are weak. They can sense when you are down. They can tell when you are not going to do your due diligence and set up actual boundaries to monitor who's coming into your life. And that's when they will come in. That's when they will fool you with this facade. And because they, they have come at you when you've been so low by the time you recognize what's happening by the time you feel more like yourself you feel like you've been with this person for too long and a lot of other reasons can stand in between you leaving the narcissist at that point shame guilt feeling like you're the one who's wrong feeling like there is something that you can do to fix the situation all of these things will will then build up even though you're feeling more like yourself you're feeling better you don't make a different choice because of these other emotions these second and third order effects of becoming trauma bonded to a narcissist when you were at your low point so low self-esteem is another thing that you need to watch out for and Another reason is that you have codependent traits. You have codependent tendencies and you're not willing to call these things codependent traits. So in other words, if you love taking care of people, but you get your identity from taking care of people, like I'm such a great mom, I'm such a, a good caretaker. Um, if you are an extreme people pleaser, if you are very conflict, avoidant so you don't want to get into a conflict and therefore you let somebody treat you uh, with disrespect they dismissive abusive behavior towards you but you let them get away with that and you say oh that's just because you know they were having a bad day and you make excuses and cover up uh, for why that person is behaving in this toxic manner these are all codependent traits these are all codependent behaviors that people will do and until you are willing to actually look and say I have codependent tendencies and start interrupting that cycle, you're going to continuously draw narcissists to you because they are drawn to people who will willingly give them energy without any pushback. Narcissists want to be inappropriately, inappropriately dominant in a relationship. And what I mean by that is that they must be the center of attention. They must have their needs met. And as long as you are willing to cater to them whenever they throw a fit, whenever they gaslight you, whenever they threaten you, then you're seen as an ideal partner for the narcissist. And until you can come in and actually identify your codependent traits and start doing something different, then this cycle is going to continue as well. Another reason that you draw narcissists to you and continuously find yourself caught up in this cycle of abuse with narcissists is because you don't have a solid support system around you. Your friends, your family, the people who are closest to you should actually be helping you uh, keep moving forward towards your goals. Your friends and family should not be a cage. Your friends and family should be a mobile border around you as you ever progress towards your ideal life. And too often, our friends and family that are around us, either we don't have them, or number two, we don't actually have an open relationship relationship with them. We don't actually establish trust with these people. We just put them there because of the title that they carry. That's my mom. That's my pastor. That's my best friend because I've known her for 20 years. But it doesn't actually mean that that's the person that I can come to when nobody else 
is around, who will always watch out for me, who will always have my back. You know, and so we we don't have a solid support system around us, people we trust to speak into our lives. And that is one of the easiest ways and one of the quickest ways that you can start to rebuild your life is to start investing in the people that are around you, the type of people that you want, the quality of people that you want to have walking with you, the people that you want to do life with. Start getting around those types of people because that automatically establishes a boundary while you can reestablish your life inside of this safe circle. One of the things that I also want to mention in this video is paying attention to the places that narcissists go. I'm not saying avoid all of those places, I'm saying be aware of them. Narcissists don't wanna go places where they won't have control, where they won't be the star of the show, where they will feel awkward, where they're not going to be able to uh, assert their narcissistic ego in a situation. So pay attention to where you are continuously meeting these narcissists. If you keep meeting them in a certain type of environment, that's the environment that they feel comfortable in. So maybe you can't avoid that environment completely, but then you need to be very aware when you go into that space that there is going to be a high level of narcissists in that area, in that arena, and you need to do more vetting instead of just letting them come into your life. When you get serious about healing yourself too, I do encourage you to stop visiting the places where there are so many narcissists. Stop going to those places. What you need to do is really allow yourself to heal, to detox, to rebuild until you are strong enough to go into these, these spaces fully rooted in your identity. You need to know who you are. You need to know why you are going into these arenas. Having too much time on your hands and not being very decisive about where your energy is going is going to be blood in the water for narcissists in these environments. They are going to tell right away that you are a prime candidate to be their next victim, to be their next supply. And so I do encourage people to interrupt the cycle of whatever it is that they're doing physically. So if you always go to such and such a place and you're in your healing period, you're getting serious about, I'm not gonna do this anymore, I wanna interrupt and break this cycle once and for all, then you have to stop going to that place. That's plain and simple. You need to put something else in that time slot that would be conducive to your healing, to your growth. So I hope this video has helped you. Of course, there can be numerous other reasons. I just wanted to do the most common reasons, the most common things that I see from my clients who are working with me as to why they continuously attract narcissists into their lives. And if you are ready to break the cycle of attracting narcissists into your life once and for all, then I want you to text the word detox to 512-677-9322 and see if you qualify to join my narcissistic detox intensive in which I guarantee you will break the drama bond or I will refund your money. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. Next week, I'm going to go over ways to prepare your life for 2023. And if you want to get started on uprooting some of the belief systems that you may have that are actually causing you to continuously attract narcissists into your life, then check out this video next, which covers this topic specifically.